Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We have two of the absolute best. How about that? We got the Pearls of Wisdom, Perlo, and we also got the Professor Joe, Joe Bork. How you doing? And Steel Flyers here. How you guys doing today, man? Sweet. Amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perlo, how can we follow you and how can we uh, get a hold of all your great stuff? Steelflyers.com, www. Just uh, look up Steel Flyers Friends. You'll find me. I got everything there. Uh, Perlo's NHL POW is my YouTube and my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, which is not just NHL, it's all sports. You can go check that out on that YouTube as well. We do Major League Baseball picks for uh, Patreon which is a app that you can pick up and people go there and they make money. So if you like making money, recommend you go there. We also do NFL and NBA. We do NFL yep. and NBA. Yep. We do all sports. Yeah. All sports. So I might even dabble a little bit of college football and a little bit of Formula One in there. How about uh, Professor Joe? How you doing, buddy? Doing very well, doing very well. It's a bit bittersweet because I'm a sucker for Game 7s, but I loved how well – the playoffs got put together this year, and it was great to see um, a great series come together of a sleeper team against the juggernaut. That was a hard fought, scratch and claw uh, yeah. series um, by the Stars um, to force it to a game six um, and almost win, obviously, the game prior when they lost 5-4 in a regular one overtime game, Yeah, uh, yeah not yeah. double overtime. So you got to give a lot of credit to them. So I just, uh, it's bittersweet because of how much I love hockey. Now we have to wait a little bit for it to come back. I know, I know. <laughs> it's like, oh my it's God. like that we, song, we, Bittersweet Symphony. Yeah, they, I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm definitely with you. Though. That's a good one. Joe, how can we uh, get a hold of you and how can we follow you and get all your great information? Um, yeah, also on steelflyers.com and then OT Heroics and Pub Sports Radio are the other things I write for that are not connected to that, at least uh, as of yet. Um, so... But great series, great games to talk about between the NFL, NHL, and MLB. So, uh, yeah, let's get into All kinds it. of good stuff. Yeah, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, what do you think, Perla? What did you think about that uh, game last night with the, uh, the Tampa Bay uh, hoisting the cup? Well, um, Dallas kind of just – I think they finally started to realize that they were overmatched. It, it looked like that the whole game that – uh, their pushback yeah. was, wasn't what it was before. No, um, they looked beat up. They looked overmatched, and uh, I'm satisfied that logic eventually prevailed, as I've been saying before. <laughs> yeah, I'm just happy it went six games because I didn't want it to be a five-game series. First of all, I did predict Tampa in six games. So for selfish reasons, did. I kind both of wanted did, to go yes. six games. Both yeah. of you guys, see, look, see, I said seven. Because I thought it was going to go back and forth. And it did there at the beginning until uh, Stamkos played. After Stamkos played, that was it. That changed that, the energy. Yeah. That was the I end was of Dallas. I was also selfless yesterday, though, because I said I wanted my prediction to be wrong because I love Game 7s. So I would much rather have had it go to – but uh, that's also because I just didn't want this uh, season that Bettman and um, Deputy Commissioner um, – Daly did so great at putting together um, you know, the, that it was I, kind of a bittersweet, almost emotional, even when your team didn't win, ending to a season where you're like, holy crap, they put this together so well, no positive. I know. Yeah. I know. And the NBA, which I'm not even as big into basketball, but I got back into it a bit just because of not having the point. Pretty bad defense this playoffs, but just because of how well they put it together too, and they have no tests, uh, positives. And all that, and they've done a very good job. Those two leads by far the best. Um, so well, it's good yeah, to be- the NBA didn't start <laughs> off all that. They didn't, they didn't well, start that, off all yeah, that. About six stupid players, but they didn't. They didn't completely, <laughs> completely have an MLB fiasco. Yeah, that wasn't that, it. Went, yeah, that yeah. that's what I mean. Like it was more the magnitude of like seven to ten idiotic players that didn't affect an overall team because they caught it right away, unlike baseball, where they integrated and then caught it after they reintegrated. So uh, that that was the big issue there. Yeah, no, I agree. But uh, congratulations to Tampa Bay Lightning for winning the Stanley Cup. Uh, once again, two ex-Flyers get to uh, get their names engraved on the, on the Stanley Cup once again. Uh, Braden Coburn and uh, Luke Shen. 
two X Flyers once again get their name engraved on the cup. Um, what I'm as, thinking is as uh, par for course. Yeah. That's, That's my favorite part about when they win the cup. I like to think about like like Patty Maroon getting his back to back and the whole story behind that. Two uh, different teams, back to back different teams. Yeah, just, just three in a row. Wouldn't that be nice? Coburn to finish out of here. <laughs> Coburn, of course. Uh, you know, and uh like just so many guys are very he his story, like he it was questionable whether he would even play in the NHL. He got kind of like left off the roster in two organizations, and then Tampa Bay gives him a good shot to play on his fourth line, and here he is winning a cup. I mean, isn't yeah, that right. beautiful? That's awesome, I mean, man. I love stories yeah. like that. That's and McElhaney, who's been a goal. McElhaney. They were able to finally get one for him. So Yeah. That's the best part about it. And, you know, here's the other thing, too. Stamkos, even though after he did come out and play um, and he did change how things went for Tampa Bay and how things went for Dallas, the fact that he came out and played for six minutes and scored a goal and yeah. he's able to now, I believe that pretty much locks him in as a first ballot Hall of Famer. Oh, I think he already was, but, yeah, for well, sure. That, but yeah, that locks him in just like yeah. with Ovechkin. You know, Ovechkin, everything he did, everything, the way you're, you know, all the scoring titles, the whole nine yards, but he never won the cup. Well, now yeah. he won the cup. Now that pretty much locks you into the Hall of Fame right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it also congratulations. Hedman is one of the best defensemen of all That's time. what I was just going to say. Yeah. I was just going to say. Very well said. All time. Is when, yeah. when they're talking, oh, you know, he didn't have the greatest game this the last two games or whatever. The game he had, if other most defensemen in the league would be very happy to have that game. <laughs> yeah, well, I was yeah, just going to say, like ninety percent. Oh my gosh, Edmund like made a mistake. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. Maybe what? we shouldn't give him the player of the year for the playoffs because he made a mistake. Like, oh Red, my. Yeah, that was that was a tough pick though because Hedman did so well. Kucherov did amazing with thirty four points. Point at thirty three points. Like you could have picked a yeah, lot one. of. On Tampa, yeah, yeah you had yeah. a three-headed race there. Yeah, um, but I do agree, Hedman, because defense wins championships, as they say, and he was able to take over and Not score a lot hockey. of goals for them. Um, that was huge. I I'm fine with it going to him, but I would have been fine if it went to Point or Kucherov too. Oh, so I was just gonna say, whatever. I was gonna say, Point could have probably been considered as the MVP for that as well because he came back from from missing that game and coming back, and even that first game back, yeah, he was he playing pretty two. hobbled. Or two games, yeah. yeah. But but coming back that that first game back, you could tell he was still not all the way back. You know what I mean? And and the I, way he played and how he was the barometer for the team. So I agree. Congratulations to Tampa Bay Lightning for a, a great uh, cup win. Uh, great for their organization. Uh, next thing we have to worry about now is when does hockey come back? Because yeah. we got the draft and we also got uh, free agency. Right, and so the Which draft is openings. exactly so. Uh, free agency or no? Uh, the draft happens the weekend of the sixth and seventh of October, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sixth and seventh. And then free agency yeah. starts that following Monday or Tuesday in nine, uh, the ninth. Yeah, but I also wanted to say though, congratulations to the Stars though, because they went from a sleeper team to a team that got rid of their head coach. Brought in a guy that's been around the league for over 30 years, hasn't coached in the head position for a long time, uh, figured it out. They've scratched and clawed and figured out ways to win on the back of a goalie that never started a playoff game until he was 34 um, and then got all the way to the Stanley Cup. Like It's still a great story, in my opinion. As I said in the article I did for Pub Sports, uh, they're also from the uh, Texas area, so I knew – um, they would probably do well there, but I did. I do believe this to be true. They had a winning season already, win or lose, because they scratched and clawed to six games against Tampa. Their guys that they have that are young that were question marks had very good playoffs. Third so, seed, they come in third yeah. seed. Yeah, um, they overperformed what people thought. Most people had them as a sleeper team, but I don't think they had them as a sleeper team getting all the way to the cup. So that's the, <laughs> that's the thing where 
Um, them getting all the way to the cup led off of Pavelski, who had a down overall season, but is still a playoff mastermind. Perry had a great playoffs. We know Heiskanen and Klimberg are beasts. And then Hudobin stepping up. It's still a great story and stuff that they should be congratulated for, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. And Sagan played uh, way above and beyond where we're used to seeing him play. And Ben played above and beyond where we're used to seeing him play, too. You know what I mean? So I, I think kudos to Dallas. Congratulations to Dallas. Um, you know, there's there's no uh, there's no hang in your head. I mean, yeah, you don't get to hoist the cup, but you had a very good, respectable season. So congratulations to the Dallas Stars as well. So yeah. all, also, I want to say something else too, real quick. How about congratulations to the NHL with having an entire playoff round robin? And Stanley Cup Finals in two hub cities with 24 teams, 1,600 people total, right? Starting off with, or something, or 600 people, something crazy like that, starting off with, and zero tests or zero positive results uh, for COVID. And, and the fact that they were able to pull it off, the ratings, the TV ratings were off the charts. For almost all, most of all the the headliner games were all ratings darlings, you know what I mean, and and completely yep. crushed any other sporting events that were happening at, at all, if there was one happening, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, yeah. congratulations to the NHL, and uh, man, we can't wait to get back to that. And speaking yeah. of, sorry, yeah, no, no, no uh, speaking of, go ahead. I hear. I just want to say, I hear. If you're gonna uh, before the end of that. What they're going to be doing for the regular season, apparently, is going to blow your mind. If you thought this was, this is the plans they have for the regular season and all kinds of stuff they're going to be doing, that is going to be like, who came up with this? So it should be pretty cool. They're, they're trying to see, uh, I've seen different um, articles, I've seen different things uh, about potentially starting at the beginning of December and then maybe potentially as late as January. Yeah, it's I'm here in like mid December, but it's the way they're gonna do it. To, that's gonna be like that's so creative. How to like that's awesome. You came up. Well, with they're it. gonna have to do something creative because let's face it, if you want to get 82 games in and you don't want to be playing hockey in the summer, there's gonna be uh, weeks go by where there's gonna be pretty much five or six games a week. There's gonna be multiple back to backs every week, and there's yeah. gonna be no breaks. No, you know what I mean. So yeah. Their COVID response stuff is what I'm kind of in talk, yeah. uh, kind of uh, leaning that into. I, Here yeah, it's going to be I've incredible. It. The things yeah, I've doing. seen and heard a lot of stuff about how that could be different next year and fun and how they make it um, next year might be an interesting uh, way. But I do think um, what Steve was saying is spot on. It's going to be very interesting to follow what's going on next year. What time in December it seems like. Yeah. To go to start. I personally, though, have no issue with summer hockey. So, you know, if we have to go into the summer for another season, that is fine with me. Oh, darn. Yeah, right. I'm good with that. <laughs> even if, if even if by next summer they allow fans in, by that point, I hey, I wouldn't care. I would go I would go to any well, That's the big thing of why they're trying to see what they're doing for the start of next season. Exactly. Exactly. They're trying to, they want to try to get fans in. Yeah, you don't know if you can get fans in all over the place so that will maneuver some things and you don't know if you want to start all over the place so that could maneuver some things that's basically what i'll say for now right. speaking of of having some fans and this was something that um look i'm gonna go completely off the reservation here on this one um, because i was so utterly shocked by this uh over this past weekend was the uh, russian grand prix for formula one and they were in sochi uh russia and it's right this the city and the racetrack and everything is right next to the Black Sea. It's a very beautiful city. That's where they actually had the Olympics and everything like that. There were multiple hundreds of people, thousands of people, multiple thousands of people in and around in the stands, in and around concession areas and things of that nature in, in Russia. Um, NASCAR had some fans in the stands. Some of the football games have had fans in the stands as well, too, whether they were pro games or college games or whatever. So I think that NHL is going to probably be one of the ones that's going to 
maybe sit back and see how others are doing it and see if maybe they can have a better way to approach things and come at things with a little bit better of approach. Yeah, it's also a little different because all these other stadiums, like baseball is going to try to have it for the CS and World Series, are open Well, when they decide to open them. Can be open where you can't open a hockey stadium or a basketball stadium. It's not like there's a roof that you can just take off the top of the building and just put back on later. So Yeah, right. Yeah, um, right. That one uh, concern I think they have is how would it work in indoor facilities, spacing people out compared to outdoor facilities where there's open air compared to restricted air in yeah. indoor facilities. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, you know, wouldn't that be um, kind of interesting that suddenly hockey games now are played in football stadiums? Well, it's not sudden. They already did it. No, like, but I mean. The stadium series and stuff no, no, like no, that. Yeah, I know, I'm just I know. saying they could borrow from that and do that. The problem is, is that how, where are you going to where, where are you going to put that where you have the capability to do that? Because you have you would have pro to have teams have playing. Fan. Yeah, but you also have pro teams. That's true. You would have to have it be on fields that are kind of older. Like, for example, um, you could probably have Penn just play at the link. So you could probably be like, well, let's use Franklin Field as a site to have games because we don't want to have a bunch of fans anywho. So you can space people out, and it's not the yeah. biggest facility <laughs> that these just, used to play. We start playing hockey um, outdoors now. So, yeah, or with baseball, you could just use baseball stadiums because that's where a lot of the stadium series, if it wasn't at a football stadium, was usually at a well, baseball. Well, now that's a great point. That so, is a great point, Joe. You know that? We can, because team. they don't play baseball in the winter. Yeah, the only teams that you would have to potentially wait on and have share someplace are teams that are in the postseason because you wouldn't be able to put a hockey stadium there until the postseason's over. Or depending on, like, if it's a if it's a California team, there's multiple places in California where you could put a hockey rink and still have a home field for the baseball team, depending. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not likely to happen. Yeah, there's also multiple outdoor facilities in California. But, probably, yeah, but that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. So, but, it did, hey, man, food for thought. What the heck, right? <laughs> you know, speaking of all kinds of other facilities and, and speaking of all kinds of other things, uh, we got baseball starting up on the playoffs, right? We got the uh, AL and the NL starting up here in the next two days. And we got a bunch of games rolling off here uh, today, right? Uh, the first one starts uh, right now. What two it's minutes ago? Yeah, pretty much <laughs> oh, right now. Should have that on. Yeah. To Astros Twins and the Astros, Twins. right? Okay. My so, gang ranking. Right, we got uh, a couple of games. Four games we got today. We got the White Sox versus the Athletics. Uh, we got the Blue Jays and the Rays, and the Yankees and the Indians. So, what do you guys think, man? Uh, how about the Astros and Twins? They're playing right now. What do you guys, what do you guys think about that for the for the first playoff game of the ML, MLB for this year? Well, we, we can't say anything on the game because we gave that to our Patreons. That's why we did series. Uh, I did pick the Twins in the series, though. Okay. All right. Okay. So I I, forget the big team thing team about the Astros, thing is everybody is nobody wants Houston to win. Uh, okay, yeah, that's what I was just going to get into, except right? Except for that's people why. in Texas, maybe. Yeah, that's why. Maybe. Well, I don't even know if they Rangers. want their own team to win now. Yeah, but you wouldn't want them to win if you're a Rangers fan either. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They do have teams, yeah. Yeah, okay. only in Houston. Only the people in Houston want them to win, and that's about it. We all, everybody wants Minnesota to win this series. I, okay. Uh, Okay. All right. Uh, go Minnesota, right? Because Houston is the 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 uh, the bad guys of the MLB right now compared to what they did from last year and the previous yeah. couple of years. Got right. a great pitching matchup game one though, Maeda Granky. Okay. There you game go. One year. Okay. What about the 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 White Stout? We can't go into exactly what you guys picked here, right? Yeah, but we but, can go with who we want to win. Okay, there you go. So who do you want to win, the White Sox and the A's? Well, I, um, again, for a free thing, I picked the A's to win the series. I just think their pitching outweighs Chicago's that fell off later um, in the season. Cease 
started being more hittable. Uh, Dunning has no experience. Bassett's been around, bounced around the league for a while, had his best season this year. Lazardo is a very solid young kid. And then Manaya started pitching well again. So they just kind of had everything fall into place and picked up everybody through injuries. And the White Sox have been one of the coldest teams coming into the end of the season mm. where the A's have still been okay. So okay. I think the A's are going to win that series. There you go. And this is these are the best of five for the first? Three. Three. No. Oh, best of three. So they did change best it up then? Three. Yeah, the okay. wild court rounds are best of three. So whoever – so the team wins the first two games and the other team is donezo. Okay, as, gotcha, uh, as gotcha. one uh, famous announcer would say, they gone. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, later today, uh, all the games starting are later today, except for the uh, Twins and the uh, Astros. They started at two o'clock, uh, and the uh, and Sox the ones at three o eight. Yeah, the Sox and the A starts at three o eight, and then the Blue Jays and the Rays. Wow, Toronto. How about that? Making it into the playoffs for the MLB, right? Yeah. That's a start today at five o'clock. I so, predicted uh, Toronto, Mr. Nick. Canada. Eh? You got yeah. You predicted Toronto, really? Go figure. <laughs> because I'm I have a brain like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Total homer all the way. Absolutely. I I I just I didn't know if they were going to make it. Or not. I had no idea. Right, I just right, wanted right. Them to make it. And do I want them to win? Absolutely, no doubt about it. I I would okay. love to see a young team like this. I think they're the most exciting team in right now, because of the young hitting. Because of their young hitting, uh, everybody wants to see. The, uh, I, I call them the uh, fat twins. <laughs> Guerrero, you know, he's 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 such a nice nice boy. He likes to. He, he, I want I want to see them win for that reason. I just love to see young. And because I'm a lead, I'm I, I am definitely without a doubt a Toronto fan. But who doesn't like to see the young team, the young kids win with the big smiles on their face, and they, you know, nobody expects it. And and I, I just I think it's a great story, and I'd love to see it. But they're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. All that. So, so, so I'm taking that, uh, Joe. I guess you're going uh, with the Blue Jays on this, or do you like the, or do, or uh, or uh, the Rays, or, or do you do you do you? I think the Rays are going to win the series. Yeah, I do think the Jays will make it go to three games because uh, Ryu can beat Glass now because yeah, he has been more hittable this year. He's going to be a guy, like I said in our video for BPAL, the free video we put out. Um, He got great last year, really clicked it in a little bit off this year, and I think next year is when he's really going to adjust from this year and look at last year compared to this year and really hone it in fully next year. But nice. if you leave fastballs over the plate to Toronto, that's the game they can win, and then Morton will capture game three for uh, – Okay. As long as they keep their rotation that way for Tampa Bay, gotcha. in my opinion. So they'll win the series. If the Jays gotcha, is gotcha. going to be the bats, Tay Oscar, Bichette. Yeah. That, that's what's going to Another gonna fun thing. young team to watch, though, that we'll get to is the Drays, who are actually in a position to potentially uh, go for in the postseason. Yeah, Padres but, would be cool, too. Padres yeah. are yeah, the Padres. Okay. Okay, there you go. Well, we're, uh, that, they're not going to be the next team that we're going to talk about just yet. But we're going to talk about the – the dare I say the dreaded Yankees? Oh yeah. Against the Indians? I mean, is is it that bad that I would have to say go Cleveland? <laughs> uh well if you're asking me, I'm saying go Cleveland. Yeah, I'm not Yeah, I'm going Cleveland. I'm not a Yankees fan, so But uh, more than likely the Yankees are probably t take care of business. I don't know. I think Cleveland for the Indians is pretty darn good. The last two years they played really well. They've been the last couple years the Cleveland Indians have been up in there. You know they they were in the playoffs last year, right? Is there any team that has a better top three for pitching in at least the American League? One. Name wise, yes, probably, but statistic wise, no. It depends how you rank your top three. A lot of people rank their top three based off of people they know. Okay. <laughs> which the Indian police act, but I would say no, not off of stat like police acts great statistically. Um, you know, Shane Bieber won the pitching triple crown, so he's great statistically. 
And then the Indians have guys to pick from because uh, you're not going to pitch Quantrill as a starter in the place where he started pitching amazing. You got Carrasco, you got Savale. Uh, the Yankees are not that deep at pitching anymore because of injuries and such. Um, that And Jordan Montgomery came back and pitched all right, but then he really struggled after a couple starts to have a five-something ERA to round out the season. They really need to win uh, Tanaka's game. And uh, and so they would have to win the first two, in my opinion, which I still don't see them doing. I see them splitting. And that's why I give the Indians the nod because they're pitching in game three with likely Plesak is going to be okay. better than for the Yankees okay. throw out because they're, de- they're only too deep. And Tanaka also got a little bit off stride to hire his ERA and eternal like whip and uh, – like all his other uh, pitching numbers and all that. So I think okay. I would lean Indians here because pitching tends to win at least early on uh, in okay. the play. Now, the now twin question for you here. guys. Yeah. Now, question for you now. They, they're doing the best of three, right? Correct. Yeah. Three. Best of three. So then the, the next series is the best of five, or are they going to go to best of seven? Next will be like the normal first round of the actual postseason, so it will be, I believe, a best of five. Okay, so this is their this is their this is their wild card kind of. Yeah, um, because the divisions. This is the wild card round. Then it's the actual DS next time. Gotcha, gotcha, Um, gotcha. And then it becomes the CS, and the DSs are always uh, with. what you call it, a five game series? I would assume. Right, right. Games. That's why I was asking. That's why I was asking. Okay, so uh, we're, we're, I think we're all leaning on the on the uh, on the, on the Indians on that one. So go Cleveland. Uh, how about the games that are going to be uh, flying for tomorrow? Um, we'll go with uh, the Reds and the Braves. Yeah, um, I'm so rooting for the Reds. I yeah, just, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm rooting for the. I love. I, I don't know. I've always liked the Reds. It's always been a team that I like. I like the really? fact they're a good hitting team. I like good hitting teams, and uh, I'm rooting for the Reds big time. Yeah. Okay, because I've always kind of rooted for. I've always been like a Phillies fan, and then Phillies fan first, and then a Braves okay. fan second. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I don't not like Atlanta, but I just always like the Reds. Okay, all right. The Reds are also one of the hottest teams. Coming in, uh, they really got hot at the right time. You got Sonny Gray, who has some experience. You got Bauer, who could easily uh, win the NL Cy Young. Uh, first game has a great pitching matchup for the ages, too, with Freed and Bauer. Um, I think that has a chance of definitely being an upset to the Reds because they have very good pitching combined with Eugenio Suarez, Castellanos, former wow. Philly Freddie yeah. Davis, who's uh, done – Good in big moments. Hasn't had a great season overall, but done good in big moments. And Votto, who's had a down season, but now that he's in the playoff, uh, Joey Votto has been known to perform uh, in key pivotal moments uh, as well. So I think I would take the Reds because of their pitching combined with guys that I think are going to step up uh, in the postseason for them. Cool. Now, that's the early game tomorrow. That's a 12 o'clock game tomorrow. Yeah, that's a 12 8 game. They have all these 08 yeah. stories. For some reason like yeah what's weird. what like right okay uh there's a there's also a game two uh tomorrow though that's the houston uh, astros and the twins and then we have game one with the marlins and the cubs and uh how about the cubs i mean i also have to kind of go with the cubs too um because for Marital and family reasons. <laughs> if I, if I don't if I don't pick the Chicago Cubs for anything that I can possibly pick them for, so go Cubbies. Yeah, I think it's uh, I think Alonzo is not going to start that youngster. I think will become their wild card guy out of the pen. Maybe pitch a few innings at a time, and they're used him well. But you got Hendricks, you got Darvish. Um, you got a guy in Mills who didn't have the best finishing stats, but really showed flashes. He had a no hitter. He still had a good whip to end the season. I yeah. mean, I think they have the better pitching, in my yeah. opinion, uh, here. But the Marlins have great developing pitching in Sanchez, Hernandez. Uh, you got Pablo Lopez there. And then you younger got, guys uh, coming in. Alcantara, yeah. Very good. 
So it's experienced versus youngsters because Leicester started having a fall off season, um, but then uh, it has good experience in the playoffs. I would still uh, definitely give it to the Cubbies there, but if the Marlins, with how they've been kicking this season, upset the Cubs, that wouldn't surprise me. There I you just go, think go Cubs. Logic, logic I like the Marlins. Bats the I was just gonna say, yeah. What What do you think about this one, Perlo? You, you obviously have a different opinion on this one. Oh, I don't. I don't. Oh. I do think the Cubs will win, but uh, I wouldn't put it as a high percentage like like Joe Joe says. I, I just oh, think okay. if Marlins bats get going, you're in trouble, no oh, matter who you throw. got pitching. Besides, like like like, they don't have the Cubs don't have the pitching. I would say that makes me want to. If it was the Indians, okay, but if. Uh, the Cubs don't have the pitching that makes me as confident to, to that they're going to be able to take out those bats. So they have, but I, I think in the end, yeah, that's why I'm confident in the Cubs that they sweep uh, the because I believe um, they have Hendricks and then they're going to use um, what game Darvish in game two. So if they can sweep the first two. That the gives them with, the most problem. The thing with Hendricks and Darvish too is they're two totally different types of hit, of, of, of pitchers too. It, so you, yeah, so you're going yeah. from you're going from fastball to a guy who just knows how to dial it in on the corners. <laughs> so it's, well, it's, a, it's a, a guy that has big change up in pitching. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, Darvish also has like eleven pitches because David Ross. When I read that article about him, they're like, "Yeah, Ross is just going to let him be him." And whatever the heck he wants to throw, he's just going to throw out there. So the, yeah. you're never <laughs> guessing what's going to play Dar- against Darvish, you, Darvish. Darvish actually throws stuff that the you hear the commentators go, uh, what do we call that one? <laughs> you know, it's so, <laughs> sort of like it makes, it's almost like, like that was a good that doesn't even have a right. name yet. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, that was a really good pitch you get tweeted at by somebody. So uh, what was that pitch? Uh, we'll yeah, just call we, it we a good pitch. We'll just call right. it a change up, I guess. Okay. <laughs> sure. The that, Brought the back the next ball, next row. Curveball sinker. The, the, the sinker <laughs> pitch. The sinker pitch to the next game is the Cardinals and the Padres, and that starts at five oh eight. And gosh, I don't even man. The Padres and the Cardinals. Uh, Perla, what do you think about this one, man? With the I want to just go with bullpens, and uh, and I I want the Padres to win, so I like Padres bullpen, and okay. uh, since they get beat up, they've got some they've they've got some bats to come back, and they got a bullpen to hold them in. So yeah, I like the Padres. And they've they've done a little bit of spending over the last couple of years too, to in free agency to pick up some 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 players that are yeah. contract friendly that Especially are team friendly. Dead. Great job. Yeah, man. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. So um, it's it's good to see them in there. What do you think about this one, Joe? Yeah, the Padres spent pretty smartly and made smart acquisitions. They're also a thirty-seven and twenty-three team going up against a team that squeaked in two games above five hundred. So obviously they have the better overall um, numbers there. So I would definitely give it to the Padres. Flaherty, who's one of the better studs for the Cardinals, again, is another pitcher. Great year last year. Struggled a bit this year. Probably going to come back and put it fully together next year. Um, So I would definitely give that to the Padres as well. Okay. And Clevenger Uh, might also come back in this series, which is huge too. Okay. Okay. And then uh, we got another game. That's the second game, the Yankees and the Indians. They're doing the 708 start on that one for their yeah. game two and then the last of the game ones is the brewers and dodgers and that's going off at 1008 <laughs> okay 1008 <laughs> and yeah. uh what, what do you what do you guys uh perla what do you think about this one do you like milwaukee or or do you like the dodgers i'm rooting for i milwaukee. think there's more conversation right, so, but, yeah. i'm rooting for milwaukee because it's milwaukee give them something to cheer about it's milwaukee I, I would love to see it happen, but I don't think. No. Are they the lowest seed? Are they the lowest seed? Are the Dodgers the highest seed? They're uh, also the other team other than the Astros that are below 500 in the postseason. They're 29 and 31. Okay. So I don't think there's much of a conversation here. The Dodgers have a historic winning percentage in a 60-game season. Um, okay. This is one just like we kind of brushed it over and moved past past because of a 43-17 and 17 team against a team two games below 500. 
this yeah. is one yeah brush right through at Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that was that was easy. <laughs> okay, well there you go. That pretty much covers uh, both the uh, the AL and the NL uh, for the next two days there. So I think that's. It gives us a pretty good idea of what's gonna what's gonna happen here for the for the playoffs. It's a best of three series, so um, it looks like it, this is. Look, everybody wants to watch baseball in October, right? This is what everybody was yeah, was hoping we could get to. Uh, right, this is what we could. Yeah, everybody was hoping we could get to here. So let's see if baseball can put it together and put something good out there. You know, let's see if they can. Let's see what they can do. They have the stage pretty much. I mean, there's one, speaking of stage by themselves relatively, there's one NBA game we have to talk about, right? We're in the finals now, right? Mm hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right? So the finals is the Lakers and the Heat. Yeah. This is another fun thing because you got a sleeper team of the NBA and the Heat going up against LeBron and AD, which is a team everyone picked one of the LA teams to kind of make the uh, championship in the West. And obviously that held true. I was always kind of on the Nick Wright camp of being right with the Lakers train all season. So, you know, got that one right, baby. Uh, you know, got put one in the back. <laughs> there you go. So, so, you know. Um, but and then the Heat, I was putting in a lot for our patrons because they just have some type of energy that you can't explain. Like they're down by 15, 10 so many times, battle all the way back. But the Lake Show has LeBron playing at a ridiculous clip at 36. You got Caruso just doing exactly what he's supposed to do, which is play defense and now all of a sudden scoring. Uh, the, the the thing is, they're winning in spite of Kuzma, who's still not playing well. So imagine if Kyle yeah. Kuzma figures out what the heck he's supposed to be doing yeah. and actually starts playing half decent. Um, the, the, they're a team that I think now, with being able to fully put it together and just having a great playoff, they're going to be a little bit too much for the Heat. But I definitely am picking the Lakers in the series. Do I think it could also go six, just like our Stanley Cup finals did? Yes, but I would be picking the Lakers. Okay, so Lakers in six. Yep. Right. Okay, and 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 uh, Perlo, I'm assuming you're going to drop some wisdom on us about this one too, right? Well, the thing I like about the Heat, and you just never know, they're they're like a swarm. It's th they um, every member of the Heat plays uh, is playing at the top of the, that they can play. So um, if they can, especially if they can. Uh, do some damage while James is off the court, uh, you know, really take advantage of their spots, which they've been doing. Can they play, can they play LeBron differently than anybody else has been playing him? Can they get him off of his game? Well, the best Only way, if Butler could guard him well. The best That's way it. I found Denver to play LeBron is, is actually to force him to go to the basket. Yeah, uh, that was the best. That that's if you give him room to shoot, he's gonna destroy you all day long. Well, no, it's just that um, he's gonna. If you can block him off, he's got to pass it off. And when he does that, he tends to sometimes make have turnovers. Turnovers. Right? Right. Yeah, if that's he's about, passing, that means he's gonna, not shooting. You're not going to negate James. You know? I, I, no, no, no. I understand no. that, but know, if he's but passing, he's not shooting. Yeah, he's also had a lot of triple doubles, and the issue with. Uh, the Lakers um, being a team that isn't even fully clicking, where if they even get going, you have LeBron and AD mainly with Dwight having mixed in good game, Green yeah. having mixed in games, Caruso, Rondo mostly other than in two games playing like playoff Rondo and not regular Rondo. season Rondo. Right. That's right. why um, he's another playoff type performer. And then Morris uh, having some good games mixed in. Um, so if guys really start clicking it in, they're just – LeBron also, the windows the Heat execute in, um, they don't really have many of against the Lakers because AD on average plays 35 to 40 minutes when needed. And LeBron on average plays 35 to 40 yeah, minutes when not yeah, many other yeah. teams play guys like that stay yeah. out for that long. So your window is very much shorter, and your guys are going to need rest too. So you're going to be have to be pretty darn good at timing windows 
and rotating with, guys in and, and out, rotating, yeah. which is not easy to do in the NBA. No. That that's why I think the Lakers are going to have a advantage in this series. They got more veterans, but Butler's heat, the mentality uh, he's instilled in them, the way heroes play, and that's why I think they're going to be able to get it to six. I just don't think they have the best matchups to guard LeBron unless if they're able to always force him, but I don't think they have the best matchups to always force him to the paint uh, yet because they have younger guys that are still growing unless if Crowder's able to uh, do fairly well against him along with uh, Butler himself to force him. Yeah. You That's can make a case that Denver had a better chance. The paint, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Nuggets yeah. probably had a better chance. Okay. Okay. Say. So, well, yeah, hey, it's I mean, you know, I say five, maybe. Maybe yeah, you think out. Lakers in five. So you're picking yeah. Lakers in five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't look LeBron James is, I guess, uh, one of the, the better players out there, but I would like to see the heat win. Of course. The Why under- not? Who doesn't want the underdog to win? Right? Uh, hey, I picked Dallas to go to the Stanley cup finals. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. I'll pick the heat. I don't care. <laughs> I have I have no stake in this. Okay. Sure, why not? I'll, I'll say yeah. I'll say the Heat in seven. Oh, yeah, okay. there you go. I have That's just something. Uh, yeah, right. I have no idea. I have I have no clue. I don't. You think they'll okay. pull two off the Heat? You think they'll? Do, I win? think they'll at least win one or two. Two. They'll at least oh, win one or two. two. Joe, you said two, right? Six. No, I said in six. Yeah, I think they'll win a couple. Um, I mean, I don't know. Statistically, if they because they, they have to win two to get to seven games. They so, um, but I think they'll be able to win one game because of the way that they just haven't been able to put games together. It's just the Lake Show have all those uh, veterans and Kuzma. If he just figures it out all of a sudden, yeah, uh, he has some skill that just hasn't been figured out at the NBA level fully yet. So. That's another uh, concern that would be there. And then you can have Morris or Green go off at any time and have good games. And then Caldwell Pope is just there for, kind of for being a great defender, which has worked out pretty well. You were hoping you got more offense from him, but at least if he can D up people, that's very helpful, especially if he can contain Butler. You're never going to stop Butler, but contain Butler. That would be big. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. So uh, we also had uh, the final game of – the NFL uh, week three happened on Monday night and uh, we had the chiefs and the Ravens and uh, uh, the chiefs totally just uh, dominated that game 34 to 20. Um, It did kind of look like it was going to be a game there at the end of the third quarter there. And the, and the uh, Ravens came out and was able to put some points on the board there for a little bit. But then uh, Patty Mahomes just pretty much, took over once again and, and turned it into the Patty Mahone's show and, and was able to once again, um, take the, uh, take the chiefs are now three, and zero, uh, top of the, uh, NFL AFC along with the Pittsburgh Steelers. How about <laughs> that? Three and zero. how about that? So, yeah, going to be interesting to see how the next week goes because there's been some uh, reports of some positive tests coming out in Tennessee that might potentially affect the game against because Tennessee is also 3 and 0. Uh, that might potentially affect the game with Pittsburgh and Tennessee next week. So we'll wait and see how that's going to go. For now I saw Or not next week, I'm sorry. Not next week, I'm sorry. Uh, because Pittsburgh is playing the Eagles next week. Yeah. Yeah, so. Tennessee um Tennessee's playing. No, I thought Tennessee was playing Pittsburgh in week four. Yeah. Yeah, they are because we're playing um, the 49ers yeah. next week. Yeah, yeah you had okay. that like the first time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. But I, I got a little bit say, ahead of myself. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. I was going to yeah. say Tennessee, um, as of now, the, when I looked at that report, it said Saturday they're going to try to resume stuff because they're trying to do what I think the MLB said they were going to do in their outline, which is locate the people right away and segment them out isolate them. and isolate them so they it doesn't take 10 to 15 days and more so of a, just a couple days 
the Vikings, uh, I saw the report on Twitter that they didn't have any positive tests after testing this morning after playing the Titans. So, um, well, there you go. That's good. We'll see what happens, but there's a chance that they might be able to play just by not having obviously any of those players participate, but uh, being able to go forward uh, because they isolated the problem quickly enough. But we'll see as time goes on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that potentially could affect the game for sure. Um, so Chiefs and the Ravens were the final game of week three, and uh, we're looking forward to week uh, four for the NFL. Quite a lot of interesting games yeah, and matchups. Great Thursday night football game this week. Yeah, man. <laughs> the 0-3 Denver Broncos. Against? Against the 0-3 New York Jets. I think that's going to be Denver's first win of the season. <laughs> you think? You think maybe we'll, you think Denver might be able to look? The Jets aren't going to win a game this year. No, I don't think they are. They're not going to win a game. This no, year. it's that a shame, a too, because I that. like Sam Darnold. I thought he's a good quarterback, and I thought he, he's – he was a good pick for them. But when Le'Veon Bell went down for the season, I was like, well, <laughs> that's pretty much. And they got, they traded away Jamal Adams. So they had nobody back there on the back end. So, okay, well, so much for the Jets. Pretty uh, much mail it in. Uh, yeah, Broncos pretty much. Are start- the Broncos are starting Brett Ripey in, though, um, in that game on Thursday Night Football over the kid from Boise State. Over um Jeff Driscoll, who didn't are they up to the didn't do too well, yeah, because he came in, yeah, yeah, he came in and played against Pittsburgh, uh, in in that game there when Mm -hmm. when Luck went down. So I mean, we'll see. Should be interesting week coming up, that's for sure. Uh, I'll tell you what, this has been really awesome. I mean, we covered almost everything, right? We we have uh potentially some some college some good. Uh, meaningful college football games coming here soon. Uh, we'll be talking about the Big Ten uh, coming into the fold here and stuff like that. Um, until you start, uh, I don't really feel that college football has gotten to a point where we're able to talk about it yet because there's none of the big schools are in and none of the big, you know what I mean? It's like there's no, you've got all these obscure schools and everything that are kind of making it, you know, that are in the top 25 now, you know what I mean? So. I don't know. uh, Sometimes you just got to root for the underdog. That's right. We're rooting for the underdog. So go Appalachian State, right? (laughs) (laughs) Right? Because I I rooted for a couple of underdogs this week, too. So we'll look forward to next week when we'll have a whole bunch of other great things to get into. Uh, And we want to thank everybody for watching. And we want to have everybody please click the like and subscribe. Tell us what you think about the show. Please keep the information coming so we can keep the information coming. Joe, Professor Joe, how can we find you and where can we get all your great information and how can we follow you? Uh, again, at steelflyers.com as well as JJ Borick, B O R E K, 26 on Twitter. Uh, everybody have a very great and safe, pleasant day and enjoy all the great games. Perlo, how can we follow you, buddy, and where can we get you? Steel Flyers, man, check it out. It's the best. It's the best there. I said it. Uh, www.steelflyers.com is going to be incredible. You can check out all my stuff there. Um, also, next week, this time is going to be the NHL draft. So, yeah, can't looking wait for, for something that. like that. Hopefully, we have a uh, we're hoping to have uh, some some more great information and maybe uh, potentially a uh, a combination show, you know what I mean, oh. where we have the an NHL draft Great. combo show. Yeah, hey, why not? It's my favorite day in the land. I love it. There you go. Christmas. We're going to have Christmas in October, yeah. right? Two days of Christmas in October. And then right after that, we're going to have free agency. So it's going to be another Christmas day because I'm going to – I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of moves happen, Ooh. especially during the draft and especially during free agency. And, oh. and I think we're going to see a lot of moves. So that's that's for sure. Thank you guys once again. Two of the best right here, Pearls of Wisdom and Professor Joe. I'm Steel Flyers. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay strong, and hang tough.